curious about why cross-pollination happens between corn varieties, what it is, how it happens, and how you can avoid it, that's what this video is going to be talking about. Hi, my name is Landon Gilfillan with Pepper and Pine Garden Design, and I've been working on a series of how to plant corn that has been started inside and which I am currently now planting in the ground. Now, whether or not you decided to start your corn inside this year, or you've directly sown it into the ground, this specific video is really talking more about cross-pollination between different corn varieties. So cross-pollination is when uh, two different plants, usually within the same variety of plant, whether it's corn and corn, tomatoes and tomatoes, peppers and peppers, when their fruit gets cross-pollinated by another plant that is nearby. So for most plants, you're not gonna see the results of that cross-pollination until the next generation. So if I have two different varieties of tomato plants planted right next to each other, and a bee lands on the flower and pollinates it, and then flies over to the next flower of a different tomato variety and pollinates it, those two flowers have likely been cross-pollinated. And the fruit that comes from it will be the true fruit of that tomato plant. However, if I save the seeds from that fruit and try to grow it the next year, I might have cross-pollination and get a fruit that is not true to that specific variety. And that's especially true for hybrid varieties. And that's getting really into the science of how hybrids work, whether an F1 hybrid variety or an F2 or an heirloom seed. And I'm not really gonna get in the nitty gritty of that because specifically what I'm talking about today is cross-pollination with corn which is kind of a whole different beast in and of itself. So if you understand that cross-pollination happens when a flower from one plant variety, or one variety of plant is cross-pollinated with a variety of another plant and how not that generation, but the next generation will be affected, corn is different. A corn can actually be affected within that growing season. So for example, I've got my popcorn variety here. Now, if you watched my last video, I actually said the wrong thing. I thought I was planting my popcorn, but I was actually planting my sweet corn. And when I went inside and looked at my other plants, I realized I had confused the two. It didn't really matter for the purposes of that video, but I just thought it was funny. I got them switched. So actually today I'm planting my popcorn and over yonder, I have my sweet corn planted. Now, I had to really think this through whenever I was deciding where to put things in my garden because of the cross-pollination that happens within corn. They can cross-pollinate within the same season and be affected if they're too close together. How that happens is this. So corn is different when it comes to cross-pollination for a number of reasons. One of the biggest reasons is that it's not pollinated by insects. Most of your flowering vegetables or fruits, such as tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, melons, pumpkins, squash, they develop flowers and pollinators, whether they are bees or butterflies, will come and land on that flower, collect the pollen, and as they move to another plant, the pollen from the previous flower will then touch the pollen of another flower and cross pollinate. It also comes into if the pollen came from a male flower and is being transferred to a female flower. But with corn, while you do have male and female parts, it's not pollinated by an insect. It's actually pollinated by the wind. So you, your corn is growing and at some point you'll start to notice the silk emerging from the corn husk or the ear of the corn. Last year, the variety I grew had a really beautiful reddish brown silk. And I'll see if I can put a picture here on this video. It was such a pretty color. But when that silk emerges, that's sort of like the female part of the plant. And soon after you start to see the silk on those ears of corn, you'll notice tassels start to emerge from the top of the corn plant. So the very top of the plant, you'll have these really cool looking tassels start to sprout out. And that's the male part of the plant. And when wind hits those tassels, it releases the pollen, which will fall down and fertilize the, the uh, female part of the plant, which is the corn silk. And what's really interesting is that each little piece of silk is attached to a kernel that will then develop once pollinated. <laughs> I didn't know that for the longest time. And I just thought that was the coolest thing that every little piece of silk is reminiscent of a future kernel. 
So again, that's why whenever you're planting corn, it's recommended that you plant them in blocks versus one single row because you need to maximize its potential to be pollinated from the wind. So the wind comes in, the tassels move around, they, the pollen flutters down and then pollinates any corn silk in the vicinity. So depending on how windy your area is, which is obviously something we can't control, if you have another variety of corn in a fairly close distance of you know your other variety of corn the wind can obviously transfer that pollen from one variety to another variety so it's recommended that <clears throat> you have your two different corn varieties at least 250 feet apart to try to avoid that wind pollination but even then you obviously still have a chance of it being cross-pollinated. So if you're really serious about not cross-pollinating your corn plants, either only grow one variety to make sure that's not happening. But then again, you can't control who's growing corn around you. Now I will say in our setup, setup here, our entire property is surrounded by really nice tall trees. So we probably have a good chance of not cross-pollinating with the corn fields that are beyond us. But again, it just depends on how serious you are about avoiding cross-pollination. Um, so either plant only one variety, make sure your neighbors are only planting one variety, or be willing to take the risk. The other thing you can do is, of course, distance. So the furthest I can get my other variety of corn around, away right now without worrying about animals getting to them is about 100 feet away. So I'm taking a slight risk this year and that's okay. I'm kind of doing this as an experiment anyway, so I wanna see what happens. I could, I think probably in the future years, unless I get another corn field set up with a fence around it where I can safely grow two varieties of corn, I will probably go moving forward only grow one type of corn to avoid the cross pollination. This year I'm kind of taking a risk. And when it comes to pollination, certain varieties of corn dominate. So your field corn and your popcorn will dominate over your sweet corn. So if you really are wanting to get that sweet corn, then you might want to avoid uh, planting another variety of popcorn or field corn um, to avoid that cross pollination. And the other way that you can kind of get around cross pollination is timing. So you can have an early corn variety and a late corn variety, depending on how long your growing season is. So I'll be honest, I wish I would have thought about this when I was planning out my plants um, to pick an early variety that I could start indoors that I know would be harvested within 60 days and then starting that later variety now. So like now, four or five weeks after I've started this, starting that later variety and then knowing that they would be tasseling at two different times and not cross pollinating. So those are kind of the three ways to get around it. Either only plant one variety, make sure you have them spaced out appropriately or really plan your timing as far as when you're harvesting and when they will be tasseling for pollination. So again, this year I'm taking a little bit of a risk, but I'm going to do it <laughs> because that's what I have this year. I really could start another batch of sweet corn inside and plant it out here, but I already have these plants growing. I don't want to waste them. I could just compost them, but we're just going to give it a go this year and see what happens. And if they end up cross pollinating by the time I harvest them, I will have made that choice initially and not be surprised by the results. And the whole point of the series is to kind of be an experiment and let you know and me know what can happen. So I kind of want to do it for the sheer sake of experimentation. Um, and you know, what the heck, I may end up just planting more seeds out here anyway, just to do a comparison of starting seeds indoors versus starting them directly in the ground just to show germination. But I haven't committed to that yet. I'm just thinking about it. So with all of that in mind, let's go ahead and get these babies planted. And then on the other side, this is the other thing I hope I have going for me. On the other side of this, I'm gonna be planting lots of sunflowers. And so hopefully the height of the sunflowers will also help block any pollination or any pollen that would come from the, the sweet corn plants on the other side of the garden. And then as far as interplanting, I'm doing a similar thing. Over there, I interplanted the sweet corn with summer squash, zucchini and scallop squash. Here, I'm gonna be interplanting these babies with um, a butternut and a butterkin uh, variety of winter squash. So they will be covering the ground. I'm gonna be trying to train these squash to grow a certain direction to keep them out of the garden that I'm looking at here. Um, but they will give the ground a nice bit of cover 
and um, keep the roots of the corn cool and have lots of room to sprawl underneath. Now this is not the ideal growing situation for me, but I kind of have to just make do with what we have. We've had a tarp covering this area for several weeks now. Well, actually I shouldn't say that, probably about 10 to 14 days. Um, we weren't able to get this covered with wood chips like we wanted to. So as soon as I freed up the space over there, I moved the tarps over here. And I'm definitely starting to see that this grass is starting to die. It's yellowing, it's looking very weak. I could pour it, pull it out pretty easily. But unfortunately, the parent roots below are not fully, um, have not fully died. So, and you can see over here how robust these weeds are compared to this area. So it has helped somewhat, but there's still a fair amount of grass back here. So I could either cut holes into my tarp, which I really don't want to do because those tarps cost a fair amount of money. I don't want to ruin them. Uh, I could wait longer and try to get wood chips covered, but I really don't want to wait any longer to get this corn in the ground. So. I'm going to plant in the ground. I'm going to try to remove as many weeds as I can while I do it. And then I also have the knowledge of knowing that planting these fast growing uh, squash plants here, they will very quickly cover this area with foliage and pretty much smother out the majority of the weeds. Um, I've seen it happen in the past. I know their growing capabilities. So a slight risk by not making sure all of these weeds are eliminated. I will just do a better job um, at the end of the season, making sure that this area is covered well with wood chips or a tarp or something to make sure I'm not dealing with this problem next year. But for now, I'm gonna just plant directly in the ground. I'm gonna put the corn in the ground and then I'm gonna put the, um, the winter squash around it and just kind of hope for the best that they will just get going and smother out the majority of these weeds. Okay, so you can see the progress we've made here from preparing this ground to over here where we still have lots of grass. Now, clearly, like I said, you can see the difference between this grass, which is yellowy white and starting to die, to that, which has not been covered. So unfortunately, this is not a no dig style garden here. I've done what I can do, but we're having to um, use a spade and a shovel just to get this surface um, grass off and try to get those parent roots out as much as we can. So we've prepared the ground and let me show you the spacing that I'm doing for these plants. I'm doing a three sisters garden. I do believe I will plant some beans out here. I'm going to be planting beans in a several different ways this summer. And one of them is this three sisters garden. And the spacing that I have chosen is to do a group of four. What's a three sisters garden? A three sisters garden. Thank you, Kenley. That's actually an excellent question. Welcome leave it to my daughter to ask the brilliant question. What is a three sisters garden? If you're not familiar with that, it's an old Native American way of planting corn, squash, and beans together because they have different growing habits and can complement the other one. So it is a actually brilliant companion planting or interplanting style. So you have your corn, which is growing high and straight, you have your beans, which will be planted right next to the corn and will trellis up it. So it gives it something to trellis on. And then you have the squash growing at the base of the plant, covering the ground and providing not only a shade for the roots, you know, cooling the roots of the plants off, um, and also helping to uh, smother out any weed burden that there might be on the ground. So it's just complementary, and they're the way that they grow, their growing habits, and they work together in a really symbiotic way to produce some really good healthy plants. So what I've done here is I have a group of four corn plants spaced about six inches in a six inch square, basically. So six inches, six inches, six inches, six inches. Um, I will be starting the bean plants inside this week. And once they're about once they've sprouted their true leaves, maybe about two or three weeks, I will be planting a bean plant right next to every corn plant. So um, right here on the inner space, I'll do a bean plant, a bean plant, a bean plant, and a bean plant. So four corns and four beans, okay? Five feet over from the center of this corn mound, I have another corn mound. So this little ladder here is five, about five feet. So five feet over, I have the center of this next corn mound again with the six inch square okay that i'll interplant the beans and then between here so right in the middle of five feet i have a pumpkin plant not a pumpkin excuse me this is a butternut squash 
butternut squash plant. So we'll do the same thing going this way and the same thing going this way. So five feet over, I'll have another corn mound and then a squash plant and another corn mound. So since I have 48 plants, I'll have eight plants in each row and we'll have six rows going down. So that should provide enough blocking for there to be cross pollination between these plants and um, plenty of room for the beans to trellis and the squash to grow out. Now, these uh, squash plants will be planted about this same spacing all the way down this garden bed. I don't have enough corn to fill all this out. I will actually be filling this out with sunflower varieties that I'm succession planting inside uh, one tray every week. So this will become my sunflower garden. Okay, so we're gonna plant six inches over. You're just gonna dig, so I'm teaching my daughter here how to do this, my 13 year old daughter. So you're gonna dig straight down, okay? And then just move the dirt over, set the plant in there, all right? and then move the dirt back and then just push gently down to make sure that it's firm, okay? okay. Because once water hits this, it's going to sink and you don't want it to sink too far okay. down. So just make a little mound, okay? So we got six inches here and now we're gonna go over. So hold that plant, stick your spade straight down. Just kind of move the dirt out of the way. Yep, set it in there. Yep, and then move it back over and push down. Perfect, make a little mound, yep. And then one more. I'm going to have to do that one a little bit deeper. Maybe just a little bit. You can even just do it with your hand. Yeah. I guess Pull since that dirt these back. are like triangle shaped, it's easier. So you mean square? Yeah. What? Since what's triangle or square shape? The hole or the, the... The corn thing. The the shape that we're doing. The yes. Plant there. Yes. Okay. So then, you, then you'll do come over here and you'll do the same thing with this. Hi, baby girl. You're going to have to make a little bit bigger hole because this is a bigger, okay. um, you know, this is a bigger cell, right? So if you dig yes, straight, cell, 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 straight down and just make a hole, okay? Put it in there, okay? okay? And then backfill. This is called backfilling. Backfill and push down. And you can really mound the dirt up around this guy. How tight do you want to push it down? You don't have to go, rah, rah, rah. you don't have to like <laughs> muscle it. <laughs> you just want to push lightly with your hands, okay? He's and you, pushing the leaves. It's okay, this one doesn't necessarily need to be showing. These are the, this is the first set of leaves and this is the first set of true leaves, okay? Right. And then over here, do this one and then we'll just go on down the row. Good job, Kenley. So we're going to get this going uh, on time lapse and then I will talk to you at the end and show you the final results. Okay, well, other than the beans, this Three Sisters garden is planted. I would say this is about 10 feet by probably five to eight feet. So ideal is 10 by 10 but I've got lots of corn in here. There should be plenty of cross pollination going on. And I ended up getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine butternut squashes in this space. And so they'll take, obviously take over this and grow into the space that I'm standing on, which will also be planted with winter squash and sunflower. So here we go, Three Sisters Garden. I've done this before, but in a totally different way. So I'll be anxious to see how this turns out. And of course, I'll be keeping you updated in videos to come. So thanks for joining me in this video. If you found this helpful, be sure to like and subscribe below and share it with those will be helpful. And I'll be sure to keep you in the loop as we move forward with this uh, series on how to plant corn from seed indoors throughout the growing season. My name is Landon Gilfillan with Pepper and Pine Garden Design, growing gardeners in their gardens, and we'll see you in the next video.